Hello and welcome to Touch Designer. If this is your first time using the software, um, you <laughs> are in the right place. So we're going to go over some basics um, to get started. And um, this is our default. Um, this is basically the, the, the network is what they call this group of objects here. And this is the default network that loads. Um, it's just meant to, I guess, showcase some of the capabilities. Um, there's a couple of things to note while we're in this view. We might as well take a look at this. So um, you'll notice one of these is highlighted in green. If I click on any of these operators is what they're called, except for the geo right now. I can't do anything with that. But if I click on any of these other operators, they're going to be highlighted in green. And you'll notice up here in the parameter uh, menu that this is changing and updating with each of these selected, right? So each one of these operators has a whole bunch of parameters that we can control. And so you'll see there's actually multiple tabs too. Um, and there's a bunch of stuff in here that um, most of it is things that you only need in special cases, but a lot of it, usually this first tab here, has most of the settings that are most frequently used, and then things are spread out a little bit differently. And there are certain you know, use cases when you need um, to modify some of those other things. Um, but to, at least to get started, we don't need to worry about anything but really this first tab for each of these. Um, and you'll see that some of these have like purple, some of these have green, and if we actually click on this little dot here, this little star is, it basically locks the operator, but it allows us to do something. Like if I was to click and drag, I can actually move this around. It's not going to affect, in this case, it's not going to affect the output at all. Um, but, right, it actually allows me to control that, whereas if I click on this, I lose that control and I can actually move the operator itself around. Now, each one of these operators um, has a star and we can lock it in place, and there's reasons that we do that um, that we'll get into as we get through this. Anything in purple is called a top, and tops are a type of operator that um, allow us to work with video and images, um, and basically anything that's going to be eventually end up in, a t in the 2D space of our screen. The green operators, which we only have one of in this view, is um, these are called chops or channel operators. And basically they work on one channel of information. So it's one value that's potentially changing, right? So you can think of it as basically all of these types of operators output like floating point numbers or integers or whatever. It's just a single number coming out. And so in this case, you can see this one is noise. And what it's doing is over time, it's right, this, this is the point that's basically coming out. They call that the sample. And it's basically going up and down. And if we had output coming out here, spit out here, you'll also see if I pull this down, there's this line with an arrow sneaking up here. So, and you'll see that you might note that these two things are very similar. We're using this chop, noise chop to control this top. Now tops and chops, you can't directly, like I can't drag this in and successfully link it um, to any one of these objects. And so the way around that is you can use chops to control parameters on um, a top. So if I click to this chop two, you'll see basically what this does is you can see this is the chop, right? This is the same name that's here is here. And it's basically saying, take this and convert this to something that can be used in this video, ch in this chain of operators, or this network of operators that's going to be impacting video. And that's exactly what it's doing, right? It's if I zoom in a little bit, which if you, um, I think, can't remember, I think it like on the mouse, it's a uh, scroll in and scroll out on the scroll wheel, right? Two fingers on my trackpad. You can see, right, there's a gradient happening here that's sliding over time. And if I look over here, there's this video or the still image is being distorted or displaced, right? In the same way, it's using this source to displace one of the dimensions in here. And so if I select this and, um, come down here and do this, you'll see there's this offset weight and there's something else going there. We're not going to worry about that too much. Um, but you'll see that this green connection, this wire is connecting here and then it's allowing, right? And this 
port here, it says this is the displace image port, and this is the source image, right? So we're taking our source image, feeding it in, and then we're using this to displace that image. And then we're outputting that displacement onto this geometry object, and then which allows us to do um, a couple things we'll get into later. Um, but then we then send it to this out port, right? Which is basically sending it out. So if we were to want to project this or have this be like a full screen thing, that's what this operator is for. It's basically just to send this out to something else. Now, if we want to preview something in the background, we can click this little blue dot on any of these operators, right? I can click on this one, which in our case, right, it isn't really gonna show us anything just because the way Geo works. But if we click on, say, displace over here, we're basically gonna get the same thing as the output because we're not really seeing any noticeable differences um, in these two. However, I can have both of them next to each other. So this is really handy if you're doing something here and then you have, say, maybe another step where you're tweaking something else and you wanna be able to compare the two next to each other and see, see what's going on, All right? So we can put this in the background. It's a really great way to preview things while we're working so we don't have to zoom in and out all the time. Um, if you zoom out too far, you're going to come outside of that, right? And so the way that this works is there's a lot of nesting that happens in Touch Designer. And so this, we don't really need to worry about perform or, or, pro, or project right now, or project. We are just gonna be working in here, but it's good to know that if you accidentally do this, you're going, you, you know what's going on and you're not freaking out and concerned that something horrible has happened. And the same thing goes with certain operators. We can zoom in on certain operators and actually go in. This is not one of those. Um, but there are operators that are actually networks of other operators and we can zoom in and go into those. And we'll look at some of those examples um, as we go through some of these tutorials. Some other things to note, um, at the very bottom of the screen is the playhead, right? If I pause this, everything's going to stop. So if your whole scene isn't functioning, you probably have it paused. You can hit the space, nope, you can't hit the space bar. <laughs> There's a quick key for it, I'm forgetting right now. But right, we can also play it backwards um, if we wanted to. By default, it's set to loop instead of playing once. And it has um, some other settings here. If we're doing stuff with sound, we can adjust tempo. We can adjust our frame rate here. We can tell it when we want it to start in this and when we want it to end. There's some other settings you can do. You can basically on the timeline, you can have things trigger at different times. But right at this point, we're not gonna worry about that. The, um, and right now it's in time code. We could also put this in beats if we're, if we're doing something like say VJing and we actually have a you know, BPM source coming in and we wanna be able to look at all of this in terms of BPM, we can, we can set that up there. And you'll see we can also set time signature um, if needed as well. If we go up to the top of the screen, there's um, link, basically windows that will open up or links in this case um, that go to like the manual, they go to the forum, they go to other sources of information. Um, so we can do that. There's, we can set our FPS up here. Um, it's set to real time right now. There's not a whole lot there. Um, if we go to perform mode, right, that's going to just basically give us whatever that out um, operator is showing is what we're going to see. If you hit escape, it will allow you to pop back into your scene. You can also, I think, close that window and it'll work. This palette, all of these things are different. Um, they're not just operators, but these are like some of those networks I was talking about, right? Where Bloom or Blur, these are things you may not remember, you may have seen in other um, softwares. Um, but what they are is they show up as, if I go ahead and click and drag this out here, right? Bloom and zoom and click and drag, right? It shows up as an operator um, and I can plug this in and you can see, right? I'm getting this like super hazy, um, very bright version of this, right? But it's just another operator I can use. It, the, but these are special, right? These are basically additional things or sort of like plugins or add-ons. They're not part of the default set. If I double click anywhere in empty space, that's where I get access to all the different operators that are just the single, right, multi operators that we build our networks out of, right? So 
I'm currently on the top screen. There's comp, chop. Um, so comp is basically things like um, cameras. If you're doing 3D stuff, it's cameras, lights, etc. Or it's sliders, tables, buttons, containers, etc. Things for like interface building. Um, and then there's some other stuff here as well um, that we don't need to really worry about right now. But dynamics is right if we're using um, any sort of uh, 3D particle system or we want physics to be applied to something that we're working on, we can do all of that in here. It's pretty... Um, it's pretty surprise. It's pretty amazing. There are a couple other things here you'll note that we haven't talked about. There's tops, there's chops, right? All of these. Um, there's SOPs or SOPs. I don't know how they what they do uh, or how they describe that, but this is all for generating um, geometry, right? Whether it's building geometry in Touch Designer or bringing a model in and then using it and mat is for materials. It's all stuff related to creating materials or applying materials to our SOPs. And then that are data-based things. So um, if we're bringing input in, say from MIDI, or if we're, or the keyboard or whatever, there's, there's options here to bring this in, but this is really for data and for bringing in text and working with text or taking, you know, an Excel spreadsheet of data and then using it to manipulate things. And so that's what, um, that's really what the DAT's for. It also um, is used if we're writing Python scripts or something like that. And then custom, there shouldn't be anything in there um, because we haven't made any custom ones either. Okay, so that's some of the interface. Um, there's also, if you're in on the Mac, there are menu options up here at the top of the screen. There's a couple different windows we can pop up. Um, there's some dialog boxes, some dialogues we can pop up to, to deal with certain things. And we'll get into those as we go forward and, and learn a bit more about Touch Designer. Um, again, and then here, yeah, we can save, export, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, so that's the basic interface overview, right? It's It looks daunting if you have not done anything with nodes before in any sh way, shape, or form, but if you've worked with nodes in any, whether it's like a shader graph in a 3D modeling program or other node-based programming languages, there's a lot of ideas that translate um, and make sense. Um, and we'll, and you'll be able to figure this out pretty quick, but then there's some other things that are like just implemented in a different way. Um, but this is a really powerful software. If you haven't looked at their website, look at all the examples and the ways that people are using this. You can use it to control lights. You can bring MIDI into it. You can send MIDI out. You can trigger all sorts of stuff. You can have audio from, say, Ableton or Bitwig come in, and you can control your networks based on that input. There's a lot of really cool things that you can do with this, um, with this software. And yeah, I'm excited to share that with you.